Okay, everybody, what's up? It's your guy Dollar Bill School right here. I just want to come and drop a little, uh, some few thoughts I had on my mind. As you can see from the scroll, FBA culture is intellectual property. And as you can see from the top scroll, just a few of the music genres that we as foundational black Americans, American descendants of slaves, we created. The idea of being erased as a people, the idea of being ethnicized, the idea of our cultures being taken from us, it's, it's scary. That's the reason why we're so urgent to fight not just for our cultures, but also our identities. I was listening to our sister, Mouthy Megan, who is always on point. Um, she was talking about how these immigrants come over here with this attitude that they don't want to have anything to do with us, but at the same time, turn around, join foundational black American organizations. HBCUs, sororities, fraternities. You know, you get into our political spaces. You're speaking on topics and issues that affect us as a people. And when you come over here and you join in and, and like just flattening yourself right into our culture and you call yourself African American, what does that what does that leave us? The people who are true Americans, true black Americans. What does that leave us? And I thought that was a real point. And to hear her say that, it spooked me. Because I never saw that angle of it. If you all keep coming over here and attaching yourselves, tethering yourselves to everything that is supposed to be for us, then where does that leave us? This is the problem that we're having. You think just because you were born here, you're African-American. No, you're not. You think just because you participate in our culture, that makes you an American. Uh, 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 no, that, no, that doesn't. Especially a black American. No, that does not. You cannot be standing in line with your hands out or standing on the panel or in a position to discuss or decide or study reparations for foundational black Americans, you have no lineage here. You have no say-so. You have no dog in the fight. Even that guy, Tamaki, what are you doing on the panel? No one is man or woman enough to say, hey, this is not my issue. I don't have anything to say about this. Everyone gets in and re -wants, wants to rewrite everything. They're literally trying to rewrite history right in front of our eyes. And they're mad because we're protecting it. I want to play this gif I put together of our foundational black American music icon. This is just a sample. Look at these album covers. Look at these names, all right? R. Kelly, okay, who else is next? Patti LaBelle, listen at these names. Babyface, these are our brothers and sisters who drive the music culture here in America. They're the ones that we dance to. They have the songs that we know all the lyrics to. They have all the songs that we create the dances to. Look at that. MC Light. Anita Baker. Come on, man. Who's messing with that? A Tribe Called Quest. Who is messing with our culture? I don't see anybody from any other country, especially from the continent, don't matter where you're from from over there, you're not doing a Bobby Brown. <laughs> you're not doing Migos. You feel me? 
You're not doing Destiny's Child. Where's your equivalent to these? Just like everyone says, you always come over here and then you do shit. You never do it when you're back home. You always come over here and say, you've done this. Well, if you can, do it again. See, that's the thing about us. We can always do it again. We can always recreate that magic. You see, our slang gets brand new and old in the same week. Because <clears throat> we always coming up with more of it. I want y'all to just sit back. Look at these names on this screen. Okay? Look at these album covers. Look at the genres. Hip-hop, gospel, blues, jazz, rock, house. All of that is in here. Okay? What are y'all talking about? We have no culture. You're looking at it right here. You can't tell me Curtis Mayfield is from Ghana. From the Gambia. You can't say that. You can't say that Mary J. Blige is from, uh, you know, Lagos, Nigeria. You can't say that. Dr. Dre, The Temptations. Look at this. I'm rubbing it right in your face. I want to know how many of you all from over there, they claim you had something to do with this. Or that it actually just straight up came from y'all. <clears throat> Show me if you can recreate this again. Crickets. This belongs to me and my people over here. And I'll be damned. If I let y'all or anyone. Tether on to our culture. It's just like Dr. Randy Short said some years ago. He said something I would never forget. He was talking about white people, but we're going to also apply this. Look at Thriller. We're also going to apply this to you, Tethers, too. We shouldn't have never let y'all hear our music. That's what he said. We shouldn't have never let y'all hear our music. Because you swear to God that New Edition is yours. You swear to God that Prince is yours. You swear to God that Public Enemy is yours. You swear to God that DJ Quick is yours. And I'm going to tell you to your face, you're a lie. This is what I grew up on. This is what we play at our cookouts. Our black culture is the same no matter where we go. We play these records Everywhere, anytime. Our parents and grandparents and uncles and aunties schooled us on a lot of their old school music. When hip hop came along, we had to school them on the new school music. We were never too young to learn. Or too young to teach. And they were never too old to learn. Crisscross. Whitney Houston. These people didn't come from over there. They are right here. And all these people you see are from the hood. They're not from the rich parts of, of America. The Jacksons are from Gary, Indiana. Prince is from... Uh, Minneapolis, Minnesota. Babyface is from uh, Indianapolis, Indiana. All right? Tony, Tony, Tony. They're from Oakland. Diana Ross from Detroit. R. Kelly, Chicago. Patti LaBelle, Philadelphia. Come on, man. What you talking about? Y'all don't have no ties to this struggle. None. Sit back. Just look at all those beautiful album covers, all that artwork. James Brown. Come on, man. Tell me. Who got it like this? Who got it like us? Where's my FBA people? Big up. 
to all of y'all out there. Because now I realize what's going on. There's a whole world out there that want to be just like you. Damn. And they throw this projection like you guys over there, game bangers, babies, mothers, drug dealers, all this other crap. That's in every uh, community. Every one of us got that. You can't take the low-hanging fruit of what we do and make that the whole tree. Well, look at this. This is LL Cool J flashing in your face. This is cool in the game, flashing in your face. These are my people. If we're going to claim any tribe, it's going to be foundational black American. It's going to be American descendants of slaves, FBA, ADOS, whichever one you want to be, us people. But that's us. You all have spent a lot of time and a lot of energy telling us you're not us. And there was plenty of times when we got offended. What the hell do you mean you're not black? What the hell do you mean? We never understood it. Now we understand. And guess what? Thank you for waking us up. Because we don't want you to be us and we don't want to be you. We look at where you come from and we do not want to go there. You tell us to go back to Africa, to go do whatever, to claim my African roots. We already know where we come from and what's in us. But right here is ours. Every bit of this land is us. We don't have to go anywhere for any resources. We got it all right here. There are places in the United States. I tell my uh, girlfriend all the time, I don't, I'm not ready to leave the country yet to like do some traveling and see the rest of the world because I haven't seen the rest of the United States. There are beautiful places here that I want to go see, travel to, vacation to, sightsee. Tell me, am I wrong, my black people, FBA? Anytime you're in another city here in the country, here in the United States, some of the times, or at least back in the day, the first place we wanted to go to was the hood. Man, what a hood at? What a project set. That was something that we always did, especially if we grew up in the projects. We always wanted to see what the other projects were like and what they were doing. We knew they were all the same, but they just had their own twist on game banging, on drug selling, on the way their buildings looked, on the way their playground was designed. And I'm going to tell you something. I am from Chicago, South Side, born and raised, 1970s baby. I lived in the Robert Taylor Homes. I lived in Stayway Gardens. I lived in All Gale Gardens. All Gale Gardens. I lived in um, the Raymond Hillier Homes. And I have friends that lived in those same projects I grew up in and in other projects like the Ickies. The Dearborns, all right, Rockwell Gardens, Pres uh, Preston Taylor, not Preston Taylor, it's down here, um, Preston Park, all right, and other areas around the city. I will always want to be like, where the hood at? When I traveled with a magazine crew back in the 90s, when we went to L.A., Texas, Indiana, Missouri, Kansas. I was like, where the hood at? I went to all these hoods around. I'm in L.A., man. When it got cold here, I used to travel with a magazine crew. So when it got cold here in the Midwest and uh, the East, we would travel to the West Coast and spend the whole three months of winter in the West Coast, California, Washington, Nevada, all that. But a lot of that was spent in Cali. So I'm in all parts of Cali, southern, mid, northern. All right. I'm coming across gangbangers, crips, bloods, and my street uh, smarts from Chicago knowing how to maneuver in the streets, knowing that we pretty much get the same culture 
It's just that people may have different language, different slang, but the culture's the same. I know how to not start some shit in another uh, city. But when I'm out there, I had all the love shown to me. I'm kicking it, having a good time. Amongst all those hardcore gangbangers, drug dealers, all my FEA people out there know what I'm talking about. If you know these streets, you know how to maneuver in the United States. You tethers don't. And then when you come <clears throat> come over here with your gang culture, it's through the roof. I just seen a report today that said Philadelphia has already 390-something murders this year. And I wonder how many of those were committed by immigrants, by damn tethers. Pan-Africanism is dead. We're not sharing nothing else no more. We're putting the gate up. We're closing the windows. We're closing the doors. We're putting the locks on. Setting the alarms. We're getting the dogs ready. And we dare any of y'all to touch our cultures again. Y'all can get out of it right now. We don't have to listen to Nicki Minaj, Rihanna, Kodak Black, uh, yuck. No one's doing what y'all do. Everyone is doing what we do. And that's okay to be copied and emulated. They say to be um, imitation is a form of flattery. I forget how it goes. But at the same time, when it gets to the point where you are literally appropriating and trying to move us out the way and rewrite history and claim it as yours, then we have a problem. You have nothing to give us. You have nothing to offer us. You forget, we're in the age of the information era, the internet. We can check in on what things are like in these so-called homes that you love so much. Y'all waving these flags and these places are literally, Donald Trump had it right, fucking shitholes, man. We are over here with running water, electricity, radio, television, stable, internet, and wireless. We got every damn form of content media we can ever consume right over here in the States. Why the hell would we want to leave here? I don't know what the money is like over there. And for what I understand, I don't want to, I don't want to go. And I don't want to know. Y'all get FBA messed up. We don't have to share anything any longer with any of you all. No one imitates emulates, you know what I'm saying, or assimilates to anything Nigerians do, Ghanaians doing, Jamaicans doing, Haitians doing, doing, Trinidadians doing, Puerto Ricans doing, Dominican Republicans doing, anything. No one's assimilating to that. No one wants to do that. We big it up. We understand that y'all thing. We let y'all have that. It's been plenty of times. Tell me this, black people, my my black people, you're out. It's a flea market or uh, uh, some type of street market going on, and it's always some African booth. And they get all the African gear, dashikis, 
Koofies, beads, everything, right? Medallions. And you go over there, you, you may browse through and you pick it up. Yeah, that's your people. You know, that's where you come from. You had that in you. But you don't be buying that shit. You're not spending 50 to $60 with them. You might buy a little bracelet or something. Just as a reminder, you know, where you're from every now and then. But we don't go balling out of control with them. We'll go right next to the booth next to them that'll probably have like some candy or something. You know what I'm saying? Some used video games and we'll ball out of control right there. Damn, they got Pac-Man in here. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh my goodness. <clears throat> Y'all need to stop with this madness because it's not going to pay off. You're going to eventually paint yourself in the corner. And then you got to deal with us on a one on one. These programs were meant for us, not for you. Martin Luther King was talking about us, not y'all. Malcolm X was talking about us, not y'all. Get out of our programs. Stop calling yourself a frat brother or soro. Stop calling yourself a rapper, a DJ, a producer, a promoter, a label head, a designer. We don't need none. It's enough of us to support all of us. I'm going to say that again. There's enough of us to support all of us. So we don't need y'all. How many of you tethers out there can tell me the history of any of these albums that's flashing in your face? Hmm? How many of y'all can name three songs from any of these groups that's flashing in your face? How many of y'all can tell me how many of these groups are from Chicago, Detroit, L.A.? How many of these groups can you tell me that Jermaine Dupri produced for? How many? Who can tell me? Immigrant? Dirty Foot Tether? Your damn domestic tetherus. That's what I call you. Your damn domestic tetherus. You cannot take thrill away from me. Purple Rain. The Blueprint. The Songstress. Isley Brothers. Okay? Public Enemy. Hip hop, RB, whatever it is, you cannot take it from me. And I will die trying to keep it away from your ass. I will check any of you. If, if I'm around and I hear anybody, if any of y'all talking out of line or using <clears throat> misinformation or trying to rewrite the history of our culture, I'm going to check you on the spot. Shouts out to the FBA family. See, the weather's changing. <clears throat> and I'm getting sick. I can tell already. My nose is getting stuffy. My throat is getting scratchy and itchy and dry. It's already happening. But I'm going to tell you what ain't going to happen. Y'all still in my culture and you trying to erase me.
We calling y'all out. We got to start checking IDs now. Where you from, family? Where your background? Who you, <clears throat> where you from? Oh, you from over there? All right, for sure. Ah, holla. No. No disrespect. No disrespect. Just letting y'all know. I think this is Cynthia Revo. And Pinocchio, she plays the Blue Angel. Now, stuff like that, you can play all you want to. That ain't ours. Disney does not belong to us. So if they want you to come in and play a Blue Angel, we ain't going to say shit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We ain't going to say nothing. They want you to come in and voice over one of their characters. That's not us, especially if it's not our story. Disney do a lot of stories. Every now and then, they may try to cater to us, but the majority of stuff caters to their people, white Europeans and everybody else under that. You can go play any of that. We do not say anything. When you coming over here and they get ready to do the MC Light story and your punk ass step up talking about something, you're going to be playing MC Light. We're going to have a problem with that. You know what I'm saying? For real, though. We're not having that shit. Cool out. We don't want y'all portraying us. And it's a shame because you all have nothing for us to portray. <clears throat> Give me two historical figures uh, who were black in the UK that had a story so compelling that we want to take on their story. We want to battle rights and make a movie about it. Idris Alba, Daniel Kaluuya, who has some knowledge was in history on a black British figure who has changed British history and the landscape of Britain, along with the Queen and everyone else, under that monarchy. So much to the point, the history is compelling. That us in America, oh, I want to portray, I want to do him. I want to battle rights and, and play him in a movie. Who, who is it? Huh? Jamaica, Trinidad, huh? Belize, what's the other one? Uh, all those other places from the islands and West Indies. Who is the equivalent to the Isley Brothers? <clears throat> Let's talk about the musical families that the that uh, Black America has produced. That you guys cannot reproduce. But let's see if you can. Let's see if you can guys can give us the equivalent to the Isley Brothers, the Jacksons, the Wayans family. I'm talking about families. Whether it's in music or whatever. It don't matter now. All right. Tell us. Who are the... Jamaican or West Indian equivalent to this. <clears throat> yeah. I didn't think so. All I know is this. Keep your dusty, tether as hands off of our shit. DJ Academics got the nerve to call our hip hop pioneers dusty. See, he's a scrub who think everything is about money. You buster. You're making money in the music that these people that you call dusty 
created. They ain't got to have money. They got access. They got a name that we're going to call out and always remember. Where are your people that we can call out and always remember? You a dusty-ass dude and a dusty-ass so-called DJ. No one's ever heard you scratch. No one's ever heard you put a mixtape together. No one's ever heard you featured on anything because no one wants you on their stuff. That's why them brothers in the shy was going to get at that ass. You just a Jamaican Vlad 2.0. You want to try to kick ball this dust and our damn culture. How come everybody and their mama got something to say about black culture? There's so many videos on YouTube where all these non-FBA people are talking about the top 10 rappers that went broke. Um, the top 10 rappers who saved their money. You know, the top five rappers who were in jail before they got a record deal. And it's all these white people, Hispanics, tethers, people with different accents doing this shit, talking and making these videos <clears throat> about our people. And I'd be like, man, talk about your own people. Y'all people ain't done nothing great. No, what y'all like to do is try to point out with some of our people that had a few bumps in their career, and you point that out, the top 10 rappers who went broke. And then you'll put a picture up there like Communion there, like he's broke. Get the fuck out of here. Ain't no even mention him because you know he's not broke. You just use that as clickbait. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yeah, I'm getting sick. <clears throat> I hadn't even really been out the house much. Y'all are jokes. You all haven't created nothing, invented nothing, inspired nothing, backed up and got behind anything. The only thing you are known monumentally for is running from your country. Yep. Packing your damn bag. And I don't know where the hell y'all get money for a ticket, for a flight, or a boat trip, whatever it is. How the hell do you get here? You claim you're so damn broke. I came over here with just $2 in my name. Well, damn, that ticket that didn't cost that $2. How the hell did you get here? We don't have to go anywhere. We're not running anywhere. This is our home. We can wrap ourselves around that flag as much as we want to. You can't say shit. You can't make us feel bad for being Americans and then you turn around and try your best to be one. We don't want to be you. You want to be us. And you're mad because we don't want to take on that shit you try to push on us. No, stay your ass out of our culture. Leave every bit of it alone. If you think that we have no culture and you need to stay away from us and we're all kind of Jairs and Akatas and all these other funky ass names y'all call us, well, don't touch anything that we created. We're not up for grabs. And it's a lot of us that sold us into this we all won shit. I was one of them that used to believe that shit, but now I don't. Because it got us nowhere. We just slowly let the damn gas in on us. And now, all these years later, now we're choking the damn death. Look at all these great albums, man. I want to see one of y'all do the same thing. Put a slideshow 
of some of your great Nigerian albums. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Some of your great Nigerian blues, whatever genres come out of those countries. I heard that damn song, Stay Away From The Akata. Hey, do that. I'm bigging that up. Stay your ass away. If I'm an Akata and a Wildcat, well, if you get any closer, I'm going to scratch and claw your punk ass. We don't need you. You can't come over here. And take over something that you have no voice in. You can't take over a damn thing if you ain't taking over home first. Everyone knows that it all starts at home. If you ain't doing it at home, you can't do it no damn where else. Talking about you're going to take over. Damn Nigerians. Who the hell going to allow? You think these white people going to let y'all punk ass to take over? Please. Please, you all don't have shit to contribute. Only thing y'all do is add y'all name to somebody's payroll. And that's it. Any music y'all do sounds like ours because you're biting from us. Any fashion you do comes from us because you're biting from us. Any slang you use is totally all because you don't come up with nothing. We don't use any Nigerian slang, Ghanaian slang, the Gambian slang. We don't use none of y'all slang. Whatever y'all slang is, it's not worldwide. It's not popping enough for us to be using it over here. But you best believe somebody is in a corner of the world saying, chilling, fresh, dope, illing. Am I lying, y'all? Somebody in another corner of the world is bumping Puff Daddy, playing Kanye, Kanye West, playing Janet Jackson, playing Michael Jackson, Prince, LL Cool J. Who y'all got? They played 13 songs, the same 13 songs every hour on the hour. And I don't hear none of y'all in that shit. Rotimi, you just released a song in 2019 and it went gold just this year. Three years for a song to sell 500,000 copies. You a scrub. You a weak. Like my homeboy Tree said, get your weak ass out of here. And that's another thing. Y'all can't cap with us. Y'all can't get, y'all can't roast with us. Y'all sense of humor is dud. We will roast the shit out of y'all. The dozens is what we do. And we do it out of love and fun. We do that shit just out of fun just to, just to stay sharp. Man, get your water gun head out of here. You know what I'm saying? That's how we cap. Me and my crew, you do not want to... Hey, yo. My homies... You do not want to be around them. They will cap your ass. They will hurt your feelings. If you don't understand it, they will hurt your feelings, fam. That's our culture, too. The dozens is our culture. We will cap your ass. We will roast your ass to a crisp. And then show you some love, some dap. Give you some dap after that. We ain't letting y'all take none of that from us. Try as you may. No, no, no. No, fam. We good. We got this from here. You can keep your damn Joel off. Uh, like our sister said, keep your mushy beans and beans and toasts. Your fucking crumpets and fish and chips, which is fish and chips is good. I'll take that back. But until y'all produce a prince, a public enemy, you know what I'm saying? Produce a uh, DJ Quick, you can kiss my ass. Until 
you can stay your ass out of our business, out of our affairs, out of our organizations. Keep your nosy, sticky, tether ass hands out of our lives, out of our spaces. You can kiss my ass. I'm going to always give you the middle finger. I never understood it back in the day. But now I do. You all are parasites. And you will not stop until you get what you want. But we're going to come through with that damn bug spray and spray your ass the hell up out of here. We're going to get you domestic terrorists up out of here. You hear me? You feel me? I'm use all our slang. You dig? I. We kosher? You straight? You proper? You chill? You all right? All that's ours. All that belongs to us. So, I'm going to go play some of these songs, all these albums that you see flashing before you. I just want to come in through with my two cents and, and say no matter what, I love music. Music is what I do, and I most definitely ain't left even to let it. And here's another thing. Has anyone ever asked this? See, we should have been... Uh, Guarding our stuff from the jump. What if Dr. Dre never fucked with Eminem? Awesome. No, man, fuck with him. No, uh, no, we had enough of that. Vanilla Ice was enough, so no, I don't fuck with no white rappers. I'm only fucking with my people. This is our shit anyways. What if Dre had been thinking like that? There would be no Eminem. And people might say, well, there may not be no 50 Cent. That's a damn lack of 50 Cent of that FBA hustler. He'd have found a way to get a record deal without Eminem. And there's no disrespect to Eminem, but this is just something that runs through my mind every now and then. And I'm sure I'm not the only one who thinks about this. What if Dr. Dre never signed or never was, never was like, okay, I don't want to mess with that white boy? What if he had never messed with him? You think Eminem would be on? And if he was, do you think he would be this big? No. All of y'all who are non FBA, who is doing this rap shit, you always get on when we put our name, when we put our stamp on you. History's gonna show you any white rapper, any whatever you are, you are not popping until we scream your name. Beastie Boys. Was with Russell Simmons and Def Jam. Third base, Def Jam. Eminem, Dr. Dre. Am I lying? Am I making this up? Or is there a serious pattern here? The only one who we didn't get behind was Vanilla Ice. And he blew up because he had some Asian money behind him. Any white rapper that has a smidgen of success is only because we said you down. Action Bronson. Come on, man. g Easy, Who is whack as fuck. All right. Those white rappers that didn't couldn't get on. They couldn't really make it or survive. Like Brian Austin Green. Remember him from uh, 90210? The other rapper, Milk Bone. They couldn't survive because they didn't have us backing them up. If you ain't got us backing you up, you're through. Justin Timberlake. Why does he sound so good? Why is he still irrelevant in this music? Because of Timberland. We all know this. So if y'all don't know, act like you know. I 
I'm out of here, man. I just want to uh, rub my culture in y'all face. Keep y'all hands out of our cultural cookie jar. Keep your nose out of our cultural business. I'm going to say it again. Keep your dirty tether hands out of our cultural cookie jar and keep your stinking tether nose out of our cultural business. I am Dollar Bill Skull. Shouts out to my sister, Mouthy Megan, my big homie, my big brother, Tariq, my homie, Phil, over at uh, African Diaspora Channel, okay? Professor Black Truth, Jason Black, all of y'all who I support in the new black media. I love y'all. I love y'all. You all are speaking the truth. I will support you any way I can. I will always spread the word. And I'll do my best to, 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 to play my part. And as I always say, preserve the culture and it's FBA versus everybody. Peace.